due to popular demand, we're going to pull the engine oh. and open it up. Really? I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you really didn't want to have to take another fan off. Yeah. Now, this is like the third turbo diesel engine you pulled out in the last few months. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from pulling this one? Always use the checklist. <laughs> Even if it's the third one you've done recently, <laughs> oh, you don't forget something. I created a four page checklist of everything you need to remove when you go to pull one of these OM617 turbo diesel engines. We did that when we did Digby's engine. And I think Ryan kind of felt like, well, gee, you know, who needs a checklist? <laughs> I might, yeah, might have been a little overconfident and feeling like And you know, you know, it's not the end of the world if you forget to remove something uh, and you start pulling the engine out. What were the three things you said there were three things you forgot? Well, this time it was the engine shock top bolts. Okay the AC line on the passenger front, and the speedometer cable. Speedometer cable, speedometer yeah, cable. you yeah. forgot the speedometer cable. Yeah. So if you're ever going to tackle this job yourself, remove one of these diesel engines, this checklist I created is available free on my website. I'll put a link in the description below this video. And I also should mention, you know, in the previous video, somebody said, well, can I see that the number two piston isn't moving either? Well need to understand the reason why. So I'm gonna show you again, the lack of movement on number three piston when we rock the engine back and forth. I wanna revisit this issue with piston slop. There were a couple of people who mentioned in the previous video that number two wasn't moving either. But you have to remember when a piston is up on top dead center or on bottom dead center, you know, the rod is rocking, so the piston's not gonna move. So I've kind of realigned number two, three, and four. Now let's watch closely as I rock the engine back and forth. There, you can clearly see two and four moving, and three is not moving. Okay, does that clarify it? Yeah. Now, Ryan, yeah. let's get this engine out, and we're gonna get the pan off and get number three piston out so we can show people what actually happened to that piston. This may give us a little more clues as to what happened to make this whole uh, engine blow, as we should say. Yeah, bring some closure <laughs> okay. to everything. Okay, good. All right, let's get it out. So here we are looking for the gunsmith. Yep. <laughs> that's built a smoking that's gun. That's built a smoking gun. Okay. Yep. <laughs> we said that we were not going to pull this pan off, and we both got out here this morning and said, we got to pull the pan off. I know you want to see what's inside. We want to see what's inside. But it was a pain. How it, long did it take us it, to get this stupid pan off? Over an hour with both of us working on it. Why? Because nothing goes smoothly. There's always something that's over torqued. This one we found out had been in before. So there's stuff that's over tightened. There's stuff that's rounded out. There's stuff that's hard to access, even with it outside of the car. Yeah, so you made a point that we got a lot of silicone right here. Yep. So the engine has been opened up before yep. and it's been overheated. So all those bolts are Real tight. really tight. Yeah. We had to use every trick in the book, chisels, heat, hammering the heads of the bolts. That's why it took so long, but, but here we are. So, tell the viewers what we saw at the very first thing when we pulled the pan off. Well, first thing that we saw... You looked in the pan, right? Yep, and looked I'll... in the pan. There's material at the bottom of the pan. Bad? So, eh, not, uh, not the worst I've seen, not yeah. massive chunks, okay. but definite material you can fill on your fingers there. And then right away you noticed what? We looked at the oil pickup. <laughs> and we see why there's a screen there, because there is some massive chunks of material here. I'm going to pull this out into a magnetic tray here to see if this material is, is aluminum or if it's something more magnetic. And it doesn't look like it is. It's pretty fine. Almost. I mean. Stick into the screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> it must be. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that screen in there. Oh, just, wow. I mean, there's some Definite evidence that something's What do you apart. see in particular with that stuff? It's really... It's really thin. Thin. It, it is. It is. It is really thin. Yeah. Let's try a magnet. Try that. Let's see if it picks up that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all magnetic material. Yeah. All right. So we definitely know something has <laughs> really yeah. gone awry in here. 
obviously we're thinking it's number three. So go ahead, let's pull number three piston and rod out of the okay. block. Let's do it. Tap lightly there, I'll catch the piston that comes out. <laughs> Feels a little tight. A little tight. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a surprise. What? Look at that. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now the oil ring is stuck. Right. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> See, look at that. We thought we, whoa, that's great. Then you flip it over. Okay. And, yeah. Sure signs of overheating. Wow. And scraping on the liner in here. Oh, wow. Now, I'm looking at this rod cap. Let's take a closer look at that. Well, that was exciting. Yeah. I, was it worth all that work getting the pan off? It absolutely was. Yeah. Yeah. But look at this. There's no bearing on yeah. that connecting rod. I was going to say, I feel like we're Whoa. missing something. <laughs> Where did the bearing go? Uh, it might have something to do with those shavings. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. it might, yeah. All right, <laughs> All right. Well, what do you see there? I mean, there's same thing, nothing, nothing here, so. Yeah, it's like, uh, so we got some shavings that were, <laughs> were in the pan. L what's it look like on the, uh, the crank journal in there? It, it looks like. A lot of that has been smashed onto it, now part it, of the it, crank. It bonded, yeah, exactly. bonded the crankshaft. To become one. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? I still think it goes back to heat. Yeah. And I think some of you viewers actually guessed it right on, because what happened with the engine overheating so much, it started expanding the piston, the piston was dragging on the side of the cylinder, and causing extreme stress on this rod bearing. And the rod bearing finally just spun in there. It just spun and kept spinning and then finally just disintegrated. So I guess the real gunsmith. It's heat. <laughs> no, is lack of maintenance. Lack of maintenance. <laughs> lack, that's. More, right, the moral of the that's story That's the gunsmith. Is, yeah. The smoking gun is the heat, you know. Yep. The bullets are the, the rod bearing. Yep. But, uh, you know, I, I tell you, this is a classic example of what can happen to an engine when it's neglected. Yeah. And I, I mean, think part of this, and I think some of you viewers said this too, oh, yeah, these Mercedes diesels will go a million miles. I don't have to do anything but change the oil. <laughs> I, I don't, now... What's interesting is, in the next video in this series, I'm going to introduce another engine that really blew. So we're going to say Mercedes diesel that really blew up. I mean, this <laughs> it makes this look like child's play. <laughs> this yeah. is child's play. And what I'm going to do in that video is the first one, the next video that comes up, I'm going to let you hear the sound. I know you didn't get to hear the sound of this engine before we tore it down. But on this one, you're gonna get to hear the engine crank over and fire up. And then I'm gonna let you guess. We'll what? let them guess yeah. what happened. Because you played it for me and- You were shocked. Yeah. Like, Whoa, oh, how yeah. could that happen? Exactly. And so. then we'll come back and we'll open that engine up. And I think it'll be another good lesson. Now this one probably was not due to heat. So it's another lesson that we can learn. And I'm not even sure it was due to any neglect of maintenance. Although my hunch is, as you'll learn in the following videos on that engine, is I think it, it could have been some mechanic error. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm, ex right. I'm excited for them to see it because I know when you played it for me, it was dramatic, so. And for those of you who think that I should just rebuild this engine <laughs> and put it back in the car, and just slap a piston, it, just slap a rod in there, I want you to come and pick the engine up and you can do it, okay? I'll give yeah. it to you for free. free. And you can deal. overhaul this engine. Yep. Now there's a reason I do not overhaul engines that suffer catastrophic failure. 
Yeah. And I literally, every time I talk about this, I go on a little bit of a rant. Yep. <laughs> but since I'm going to rant in the video following, I'm not going to rant now. Okay. Yeah. You've heard me rant. Oh, so yeah. yeah uh, it, I'm not going to rant now. But there are a few lessons that we can learn from this. And we're going to go over those now. We're going to kind of clean this up. And Ryan's got to hit the road here. So I'm going to come back in a few minutes. And I'm just going to share with you some things that you can do to prevent this from happening to your own diesel engine. Yeah, because I mean, ultimately it comes down to two words on this, basic maintenance. <laughs> or preventative. Preventative maintenance. maintenance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just really pretty simple stuff. And you hear people talk about, you gotta take care of your fluids, you gotta take care of your filters, but to see, I mean, the drastic consequences yeah. of what it can cause is it's pretty impressive and probably a pretty good motivator for people to think, man, maybe I should do my coolant service. That's right. Not yeah. a bad idea. And I think Ryan, Ryan commented that he thinks that possibly lack of coolant maintenance could be one of the most neglected service items on these older cars. Yeah. Not just Mercedes diesels, but any older car. People exactly. tend to just, oh, I don't need to change coolant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you have cool. a good trip yeah. and uh, I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll talk about some ways you can prevent this from happening to your engine. I have a few props out here, and before I talk about prevention, I want to talk about inspection. Because you might be wondering if your old Mercedes has been neglected as far as coolant. You may have recently purchased the car, and you don't know the history of it. One of the first things you can do is to just drain a little bit of coolant out of the bottom of the radiator, half a gallon or a gallon, and let it settle. Let it sit overnight. And that's what I did here. Look at this. You can see how the rust particles settle into the bottom of the container. And that's a sure sign that you've got a lot of rust floating around inside the block and the radiator. So even if you were to clean the block out, you might have a problem with the radiator. Let's say you drain the coolant and the coolant looks clean. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything's okay because maybe the previous owner, you know, flushed the system and it still was rusty inside. And I've learned one of the best ways is just to start pulling a few radiator hoses. <laughs> if you pull a radiator hose and it's rusty down inside, that's a sure sign there's been some neglect. When you pull a good radiator hose, it should look like this. You'll see a little bit of, you know, discoloring down there, but you won't see rust. You see, I've learned that radiator hoses can get changed and you look in the hose, it looks okay, but very seldom will you see anybody go in and clean out the inside of the thermostat housing. So that's a real good clue right there that this is an engine that suffered from long-term neglect. This isn't something just happens in a few months. This is long-term neglect. And this is a type of corrosion that you'll see particularly in these areas here. And that's where a lot of the leaks will occur, where the aluminum is corroded due to lack of the proper coolant. And when it gets really severe, you'll see something like this. And this is definitely where a leak will occur because look at the amount of scaling on that particular corrosion there. So don't assume that your cooling system is okay just by looking at the coolant or looking inside one of the top or lower radiator hoses. You know, you might want to dig further and get inside these housings and that'll really tell you how well the system has been maintained. So if you check those things and you find evidence of rust, you may need to take your car in to have it power flushed at a good radiator shop. This is something you probably want to have done professionally, you know, especially if it's really rusty because you, you really need to get that whole system cleaned out and new coolant added. Now, if you do take it in to have it serviced, you want to specify the type of coolant that they're going to put in your Mercedes-Benz. And since Mercedes no longer makes the yellow coolant. This is what I recommend. A lot of people use this because it has the Mercedes specification and that's the Xerox G05 coolant. Now remember if you buy a straight coolant that's not pre-mixed you want to mix it 50-50. Not with tap water, okay? <laughs> you want to mix it 50-50 with distilled water. So go to your local grocery store and pick up a couple gallons of distilled water and then get an empty jug Mark it 50-50 and mix 50% of the coolant and 50% of distilled water and put that in your trunk. 
So if you have a problem losing a little coolant, never add just water. And in particular, never add just tap water. You always want to add to your cooling system a 50-50 mix of the proper coolant and distilled water. Because I think what happens on a lot of these old cars, and I've seen quite a few in the last couple of months uh, show signs of severe coolant system neglect. Here's the scenario, okay? Your old Mercedes starts leaking a little coolant. You don't see where it's going. Uh, you don't see a big puddle on the ground. So you just grab some water, tap water, and you put a cup in or whatever and fill it up to the mark and off you go. And you think, well, that's fine. I'm not really diluting it. And then you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. And you're just thinking, ah, this isn't enough of a leak to worry about it. And pretty soon you have 80% water and it's tap water to boot in the cooling system with very little protection, very little lubrication qualities as well. So that's how the scenario goes. And I've seen this over and over again. You know, just find the leak. If you're losing coolant, it's not evaporating in the system. <laughs> the engine is either eating it through the head gasket or it's coming out somewhere, usually at hot temperatures and high speed and you don't see it. So that's why I recommend any of these old Mercedes do a cooling system radiator pressure test. This will show up the smallest leaks. If you don't believe it, you know, look at some of the other videos I've done in the last month. And we even developed a special cap to go along with our brake bleeder so that you can use your brake bleeder to pressure test your system. Once you pressure test your system, any kind of a leak, a little pinhole leak, and particularly the leaks that show up around those thermostat housing nipples and the uh, water pump area where there's corrosion on the aluminum, those are where the leaks occur because they only show up at very high pressure or when the engine is really hot. So fix a leak, okay? Just fix the leaks, get the proper coolant in your car, and if you're going on a long trip, carry some coolant in the trunk, but make sure it's already 50-50 mixed with distilled water. And if you follow those steps, I think you can avoid <laughs> what happened to this engine here. I thought I'd throw in a little post-game analysis. You know, I've often said it's never just a head gasket. And I say that in relation to an engine that gets severely overheated. A lot of people say, well, I'm just going to take it in the shop and have the head gasket replaced. Now, just follow me very carefully here and you'll understand what I'm harping on. Can you imagine if the owner of this car, he told me it kept overheating, and let's say he took it into a shop, and the shop did a compression test, and they also did a radiator uh, pressure test, and they found out that the head gasket was bad. Now, this head gasket did have a leak, okay? It wasn't blown, but there was a small leak right here. And so the shop comes back to the owner and says, well, look, there's some rust and corrosion in the head. We could flush the block and let's install a new head gasket. Now, this was just before he started hearing strange noises in the engine. Remember, he drove it a number of weeks with it overheating and he kept adding coolant. He even changed the thermostat, but it overheat and it just got worse. And all of a sudden, it's just started banging. So you can see the progression, but let's cut it off right there in the middle and have him go into a shop and have the head gasket replaced. And the shop, nor the owner, would know that the damage, the collateral damage caused by overheating had already started. So he gets this, you know, $2,000 repair bill, gets in the car and heads down the freeway on his merry way. And all of a sudden, 500 miles later, the engine starts knocking. And I've seen this happen so many times, and that's why I say it's never just a head gasket. I do not replace head gaskets on cars that have been severely overheated. And by severely overheated, I mean to the point where it's almost red lighting, particularly the point where the engine just kind of quits. <laughs> you definitely don't want to do that. But just a word to the wise, if you are facing this type of problem, be very leery of just replacing a head gasket.